I'm gonna do a view here for Gabe for Overwatch. Oh god, doing some DPS. Let's see what we got. I know in the thumbnail I saw some tracer. What I'm gonna do now. No. Alright, so Anubis, Reaper Defense, do you ever tab? We have Lucio, Sigma, Orisa. More, uh, let's talk about DPS. Oh well. Okay, yeah, so Reaper Defense is tough. I think you have to play it kind of like you play Farah Defense for the most part. Applying backline pressure where we can. So, like, if they were to swing this way, we can actually come in from this side as Reaper. If they go in this way, we can fall down onto them. Or we can just meet them up front. You have a lot of options as Reaper. If they're just chilling for a long time and they have no way to pressure high ground, you can just TP up here and just annoy them. Let them know that you're up there and they're going to play way differently and slow them down. And we have to do it. So, Reaper does too much damage to Maywall. So, don't be afraid next time. To just destroy it typically you just destroy the middle or one next to the middle and that's what most people just kind of assume to do so this one this would be the ideal choice just break that pillar for your team okay then we're sitting front line so really unfortunate that we had to use our shift there uh means we can't exactly go in right now so usually what you can do is you can go in shoot a bit and then shift out now we can't do anything so our shift is off a of cooldown and this is a product of just playing from up front. So we, we talked about it right at the beginning. What we could have done instead, we should have just immediately broke this down and then went in behind their team. And then in the little square area over here, you could be shooting and then you could shift and come all the way back to your team if you need. That's the ideal position to be as Reaper. You are a flank as Reaper. So we have to use our shift, it's unfortunate. Uh, with the circumstances we're in, you're playing it right, just fire damage into here. You do a ton of shield damage, you do a lot of forward cone damage, just shoot. Just break it. Yeah, that's all you gotta do. Now you walk into them. Well, that will charge. And then tiny, tiny things. But you could have let that hog actually use his E. So you get more ult charge, but you know they're gonna use it. All right, so they don't have any, oh my God. They don't have anything that can test high ground, so don't be afraid to actually just go up here and mess with them. Even if they see you TP up there, that's kind of the point, because then they're like, oh, Reaper top, and they start thinking about it. Hog's gonna pay some attention to you. He's gonna be looking for a hook on you versus the team. They're not gonna be applying as much shield pressure because they think about you, and then they won't really commit anywhere because they're really worried, and if they do, then you're already in position. So don't be afraid to go for that. Because remember, as Reaper, you have a get out of jail free card with your shift. So even if you get in trouble, you're okay. All right. Well, never mind. They have a widow now, so now we don't do that. All right. You got a kill. They have a widow. Walk into their team. If you stay over here or over here, you're vulnerable still to the widow. And this is why widow works so good at low rank. Your team just got a major kill on their tank. If you guys all go into their team, the Widow well, widow is taken out of the fight. If Widow's taken out of the fight, you can't lose because it's literally a 6v4 at that point. So especially as Reaper, again, you have a Get Out Jail free card. Go into their team. You killed their Hog. That's the one thing you should be worried about. Well, that and Widow. And if you go forward, Widow can't get you. The two threats that could hurt you are now gone. Don't be afraid to be aggressive. Now Maze down too. You need to go. Go, 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 go. Build your ult. Go. Go do something. I don't like you sitting back here. Oh god, that was risky. Did that right in the open. This your one. This is good. Now remember, with the new Reaper changes, you if Widow's up here, you could TP up to her, and you can avoid getting hit by that initial headshot, and you can take a one v one. So don't be afraid to do that. In my experience, what I do when I play Widow and how I get those headshots is Reapers always, for some reason, when you go up there, go to their left. So for me, if I'm Widow aiming forward, they always go right. So I just kind of track it and hit the shot. So what I do is Reapers, when I go up there, I crouch. <laughs> they never hit you. You crouch and get underneath the Widow. It's pretty funny. But yeah, don't be afraid to do that. You're Reaper. The reason you're so good in this meta 
the double shield meta is because he can get in and get out for free. That's why Doom's so good. That's why May's so good. Because they all have those get out of jail free cards. Ways to just say, screw it, I'm out of here, and leave or protect themselves. Like here, you can go meet them in here. Like, don't be afraid to do that. You're a Reaper. Again, you have a get out of jail free card. Go in there, take two shots to get your ult, and then get out, and now you have your ult. Good pull. But right here, I'd be going behind. So you know Arissa's down her shield, so they're not going to want to go initially really fast, and if they do, they die. It's a Sigma ult. Let me just kill everyone. We over ulted. See what I mean? Get out of jail free card. You could have been hooked, and you still wouldn't die. Alright, so you have your ult. I'd go up here. I'd check if they still have Widow. If they still have Widow... I don't know about going up here. Actually, you know what? I think no matter what, I would go up here right now with my ult and try to hide. If you sit on the, the lip where it's a little bit lower and sit in this corner and crouch, they can't see you out of spawn. They won't know you're there. It was fair all the time. Okay, they're waiting to reset. We're poke checking. Yeah, I can imagine if we were up here and just drop down behind them and ult. They don't have a D.Va or anything. They can't stop you. They do have a Kree. So you just do what you're supposed to do on Farah. Find the Kree, and you can animation cancel your first shot. So you want to drop down, left click right on the Kree, and as you left click, hit your Q, and you'll kill him before he can stun you. Uh, other couple plays you can do here. Speed rewind. So with Reaper, it's more about talking about highlight plays we can do. But you can TP on this platform right here and drop down behind them. You can also TP up here and drop down on them in here as well. Or you can just walk in and queue. You have so many options here. But I want to see you get this ult off. Okay, there we go. And you fucked it up. It's okay. It happens to the best of us. It's not over yet. Okay, walk in and ult. Perfect. Probably play it again. So, side note, as a Pharah main... Oh, hello. One of the most frustrating things for me on this map as Pharah, one of Pharah's best maps, is actually Reaper standing up here. Reaper is one of the weird fights for Pharah because I have to land three directs to kill you. Because you have 250 HP. I'd rather squish is two directs. So if you had two direct, if you had 200 HP and saw your shift, I would take this fight all day. But if you're already up here, it really hurts Farah. Farah likes to play at medium, medium long range. If you're up here, you're forcing a close range fight where I don't like to fight because you can just get out of that as Reaper. The only times I fight at that range is against pretty much Kree and Soldier. I lose to Reaper up here, so don't be afraid to pressure Farah that way because the skybox isn't much higher than right about here on this line. Even if Farrah is as high as she can go, you still are in optimal range to fight her. And she can't beat you straight up. She needs a mercy pocket, and then she still has to play safe to a point where you will never die. So as soon as you get low to like 150, you can just hit shift and just fall down to this health pack and get all the way out, and Reaper can't, or er, Farrah can't do anything to you. This is one of the few maps that like I don't like on Farrah and the Reapers, because they just screw with me. Same thing on second point. They'll sit on that high ground, and I have to choose different attack options, and it's... Miserable. So tiny things again, just think about. So we kind of got baited into our shift here. Don't be scared. It's Doomfist. I've seen your reaction times. Just back up, and you can react to if he lets go of his right click. Uh, second thing is, yeah, we hit shift because we get scared, and he falls back. Immediately cancel this. Your cooldown starts the cooldown timer after you cancel and get out of wraith. So if you stay in wraith this whole time, your cooldown doesn't start yet. So you can get an extra two seconds. So you should, this should be at six seconds right now. Every little bit matters. So don't be afraid to cancel your ray form if you can get your cooldown faster. If you're already safe and you were already safe. Like right now, it could be up, which means we could already be on them. And that's how you apply maximum pressure as Reaper. Okay, quality is dropping hard on this club. Okay, so we're in. Wow, quality. What is with this? Look at this. Anyway, 
Yeah, see, that's a good TP. Look at that. In like one shot, basically, you did 43% of her health. Bears hate Reaper on this map. Alright, so 30 seconds. Theoretically, this is last fight if they don't cap this point. And we're 80% to ult. I need to build my ult. I want to play extra aggressive right at the beginning to make sure to get that. So we can just ult win this fight. So it's another opportunity. We could have went behind them. So I'd be staring at my ult charge, and I would be pounding Q at this point. Every left click, I'm hitting Q. Hopefully, I get it. Right here. Fucking Q, 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 Yeah, it's Reaper. It's Anubis. It's a good map. Okay. Okay, so I didn't see Tracer. Reaper's guns just look like Tracers. In thumbnail version. Okay, so Reaper attack is a bit different. Um, I'll try to show you. Okay, so we're just going to go with the team. This is fine. A couple other options you have is to kind of sit over here and then Wraith either into Market or over to Archway. And then you can shift behind them and then chill on point for a bit. Or you can swing up behind them. You have a lot of options as Reaper there, but this is fine. Good decision here. Your team got walled off. There's nothing you can really do to help them. You're Reaper. You're on the flank. So go ahead and take a flank. I like this. If your team survives by the time you get here, you can just win the game right now. They do survive. So we're in. And pack out. So I'm fine with panicking out there because if we do get hooked by the hog, even if he misses his full combo, which we should expect at everything under top 500, he won't be able to do 250. But if anyone touches you at all, you die. So I'm fine with the panic shift out. I'm okay with that. So there, I would have done something. So we already lost one, so I'm assuming this fight's lost. We lost our main tank. I would shift into their team. Two things, one of two things is going to happen. Either they're all going to turn on you, and then you just, while still in Wraith, escape. And if they don't all turn on you, then you get damage, and then you can just walk off and escape if you need. My goal right now is to build ult charge. That's pretty much it. So I want to see if you more aggressive here. Well, this is fine. Just getting damage, getting ult charge, but we lose this fight no matter what. There we go. Be more aggressive. Oh, let me panic out. Yeah, stay insane, stay insane. He's super close to your ult. Yeah, keep spreading that shield. So this is all fine for how we're playing. I'd like to see you again be more aggressive. If you go in, all this pressure coming into this room goes away because they have to react to you, and it helps your team get in. And you do the same thing, but I need you to pull that ult. Okay, there you go. Yeah, just hit it. We win the game. Because their team didn't capitalize on a Sigma being down. Their team should have just walked into you guys. If their team walks into you, then. Easy peasy. Super simple. Nah, that wasn't even full charge. How'd you die? And then you 200 HP. That's still close, not fun. Either way, we win. So that was a really short one. Uh, so what we want to start doing is find more ways to be aggressive. The best way to do that, of course, is these water reviews to, I can point out different areas that we can, things to look for. But next time you're playing Reaper 2 in here, just talk to me. We'll try to find those opportunities for you to go on those flanks and be more aggressive. It's going to feel really uncomfortable at first. You're going to feel super vulnerable, which, I mean, makes sense. But after we get more comfortable with that, you shouldn't have any issues going in and being aggressive. You can look at the top Reaper players, like all the streamers and the OWL players, top 500 Reapers, GM Reapers, whatever. They're super aggressive on the flank because you can do that as Reaper. Again, you have a get out of jail free card with your shift. So go ahead and be that Reaper. Go be aggressive and mess them up. In general, same thing on Reaper, uh, Tracer and Sombra for you too. So you just play so kind of timid. Like You do need to respect your opponents and understand that they can beat you, but... You also understand that your character is designed to be super aggressive. All those characters are designed to be ungodly aggressive. So go be aggressive. I want to see that happen a little bit more.